Hey citizens, Anthony the Internet Politician here, and today we're going to talk about some basic accounting and taxation for those of us who are self-employed YouTubers operating as a small business. Uh, this means that you are a sole proprietor who files your business as part of your personal income taxes. Uh, for the rest of you, I'm sure there's plenty of videos about business finance for corporations somewhere on YouTube. Anyway, let us start with the most basic thing, accounting, and there are three accounting methods. Uh, cash, which is income and expenses are recorded as they occur. So money goes in and money goes out. As soon as the transaction hits your bank account, it is accounted for. Not before, not after, the moment it happens. Now, the second method is accrual, which is when income and expenses are recorded within the period that they are anticipated to be received or dispersed. Could be now, could be in two and a half months, as long as it's within whatever uh, financial segment or quarter, depending on how you do your math, as long as it's done during that expected period of time. If it happens during this quarter, like for example, even if the bank has not seen high nor hair of it, it is accounted. Now, modified accrual uh, for the third type is a combination of both methods, which most people perform when it comes to personal finance. Essentially, we add deposits as they occur, but then we deduct expected debits from our checkbook before they occur. Although personally, with all of the pre-orders on products coming out up to six months into the future, I've been waiting longer before accounting for them. Other than actually knowing how to use a calculator, checkbook, spreadsheet, or maybe even a ledger, there's really nothing more to it. Well, except for record retention. Uh, it is recommended that you maintain all of your accounting and tax records for at least seven years. That provides enough time for any audits, claims, or lawsuits to happen. Not that they will, but losing those records could wind up putting a person into a lot of trouble. Anyway, we now move on to the thing that the Founding Fathers fought for the right to have, taxes. But you know, those with a representative government. I like to tell people who are new to self-employment income to essentially just take about 20% off the top and just keep it in a savings account. Do not forget that there are also state and local taxes too. Uh, unlike with a job with a W-2, no one else is going to give money to the IRS on your behalf to go towards your taxes. Also keep in mind that your local government may want you to pay your taxes quarterly if you estimate that you will make more than some minimal amount. It is always best to reach out to your local tax office to see what they would need from you. Uh, being audited and or fined is not fun. So the breakdown of self-employment income tax, uh, as of 2024, it is 15.3%. When you file your 1040, um, which is your individual tax return, it'll be part of Schedule C. So that 15.3% breaks down to 12.4% of Social Security taxes and 2.9% for Medicare. So keep that in mind. Now, uh, we get on to the part where people are like, okay, how do I deduct? Well, up to 50% of the costs can be deducted on your personal taxes. 50%, not all of it. People seem to misunderstand how tax deductions work. They can only reduce the amount that they will owe to the government. They cannot get you a refund. There are some exceptions that we, we speak about tax credits, but we're, we're, we're assuming that none apply here and we're not gonna get into tax credits. Remember to keep your receipts though. Uh, any business related expenses can help reduce your tax burden. That includes fuel, limited meals, expenses, supplies, utilities, travel, and overhead. Do not forget that in addition to the ad revenue that you may receive from YouTube, you may also record any outside ad revenue. If someone is paying you to run an ad in your video, even if you make that ad yourself, that is considered income. This also includes income earned via affiliate programs. You will need from YouTube, the ad buyers, and the affiliate programs an IRS Form 1099. It will most likely be an IRS Form 1099 NEC, and when you file your taxes, you will need to bring those forms with you. If you earned under $600 with any of the revenue providers, they may not issue you this form, thus you may always request it from them. Another thing that really needs to be discussed is the difference between personal and business use. Uh, when filing taxes as someone with a self-employment income, you will get asked questions about how you're utilizing your assets for business. That means things like uh, if you have a home office or an office in a building somewhere else. For the ease of bookkeeping, uh, it is easier to keep everything separate, but for a small business, that may be difficult. For example, I keep my business stuff in a single room in my house. If the room is one eighth the size of my home, then we can estimate the cost of my space for deduction by dividing everything by eight. So that means uh, if, let's say I paid rent uh, and it was $1,000. 
And then we would divide that by eight, which I think is 125. And that would be the deduction I would make for each month for, you know, my home. So, you know, there we go. Anyway, speaking of separating things based on its usage, uh, this is now true for your YouTube channel. If you're earning ad revenue with your YouTube channel, do not also use it as your personal channel. It is easy enough to create a separate channel just for your not-for-profit videos or for when you are checking out the latest fads and as you surf the platform. Uh, plenty of high-profile YouTubers already employ this tactic, especially with the rash of channel thefts. So recently, a few friends with monetized channels have been seeing their ad revenue being reduced because YouTube determined, uh, quote-unquote, suspicious activity with their channel. For one of them, he separated his personal usage from his business usage, and after two months, his revenue returned to normal. It is not worth losing ad revenue because your channel is linked to something questionable. This is especially true if your channel is family-friendly. Uh, the separation of usage also makes the accounting channel costs easier. Um, you can easily deduct from the cost of your, like, let's say, TubeBuddy Pro membership from your business channel if you do not also have to consider your personal usage of the YouTube Premium membership. But just like with other costs, if you also use your channel for personal reasons, we then have to consider that percentage. I tried to explain some of this to a group of YouTube channel owners during a live stream, and I'm aware that it can get confusing. That is why I highly recommend keeping things separate. If you have no inkling of earning income, then let nothing stop you from combining your business and personal activities. Not that you really have any business activities, I guess. Another question that came up was about YouTubers who would like to exploit profitability and actually could earn income from their channels, but are on government aid, specifically disability. Speaking with an accountant and other tax professionals, plus looking thing, things up, you know, as one does, uh, you, you may want to consider a special needs trust. Essentially, you would find someone, hopefully a lawyer, that you can trust to create a trust, hence the name, to receive the income from the YouTube channel. Your trust would then use the income to pay your expenses. The theory is that in turn, your social security income, Medicaid and, or Section 8 uh, payments would not be impacted as you would not be directly receiving the income. Now, before you start questioning the logic of it, yes, setting up a trust for this purpose may sound somewhat ethically dubious, uh, but we were unable to find a case where someone specifically exploited this type of trust. The legal wrangling for setting this thing up, or even a special needs trust, is quite involved. Uh, there are a lot of nuances to accounting and taxation, but most people with a monetized YouTube channel generally avoid them. These include the methods of considering depreciation and special cases for purchase orders and spending that most do not simply encounter. Uh, because as a small business YouTuber, you generally just work in your home. Some assets cannot be entirely separated from being either business or personal, but you will find things to be much simpler if you try to also remember to maintain your records. I would like to add one final note that if I had said it at the start of this video, you may not have had a reason to fully watch. If the total income for everything that you have earned from YouTube, ad providers, and affiliate programs is under $600, keep in mind 2024, you actually do not need to worry about filing it with your taxes. The advantage to filing, even if you have earned less than $600, is the deductions. Tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video. Did you like what you saw and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.